Cry baby, baby, cry, cry, cry. Cry baby, baby, cry, cry, cry. All began on a bleak black day. For all his wrongs, he had to pay. Search for a happiness that couldn't be. The bleak black day was all that he could see. Go cry baby, baby, cry, cry, cry. Cry baby, baby, sit down and cry. Push him too fast against a hard cold wall. No one to hear, no one to call. He felt so scared, so doggone blue. Couldn't figure out just what to do. They yelled, cry, baby, baby, cry, cry, cry. Cry, baby, baby, cry, cry, cry. Sweat was pouring from off in his brow. Wasn't no hope for him, no how. Lips formed a prayer and he bowed his head. The next five minutes he might be dead. Go cry, baby, baby, cry, cry, cry. Cry, baby, baby, cry, cry, cry. <laughs> with that gun on you. You guys cut out. I'll meet you at the drive-in later. <laughs> you did a job. You had it coming. Too bad Carol can't see it. Maybe she will. <laughs> I like that. Maybe she just will. <laughs> Come on. Thanks, Julie. Here, let me give you a hand, fella. Jimmy. What's the matter? What happened? I'm Manny in this gang. Come on, let's get you straightened up. Come on. Hi, Manny. Everything okay? Sure, Pete. Hi, 
I'm Annie. Get lost. <laughs> they don't know when Manny's through with them. Should have seen the punk. Butcher shop me. Oh, no. Was it Jimmy? You worried about that punk? No, Manny, but he's just a kid. He's a punk, baby. Say it. Say what, Manny? Jimmy Wallace is a punk. Manny, I... Say it. Jimmy Wallace is a punk. Louder. Jimmy Wallace is a punk. Yeah, my <laughs> girl, baby. <laughs> You bet I do, man. That's my girl. Drink it. Don't waste good alcohol. That's my girl. Here, play me some records. You know what I like. Boy, you sure got what it takes. Your old man and old lady are visiting some clowns out of town. Won't be back till tomorrow night. <laughs> man, you're really moving fast. And with class. <laughs> Hey! Knock it off. That's Manny's chick. Carol? I thought she was with Jimmy Wallace. Manny took over. When the Mannies of this world take over, the Jimmy Wallace is getting lost. Hi, Al. Hi, Gad. You're a Jimmy Wallace, Gad. Get lost. Oh, look, Manny. Get lost. Get good and lost. Manny, get. Where is it, Al? Get lost, Gad. Well, you still can. <laughs> <laughs> Manny, I thought Gad was a friend of yours. Hey, you better get me two more, Joey. I'd one in the car. The guy puts something on the price when he sells to a miner. lives off of me. Ooh, whatever happened to music? You're giving your age away. Why, good evening, Mr. Gannon, Miss Julie. <laughs> Save it, Glenn. I hate to see clean-looking kids like that go into that place. Well, they aren't that clean when they come out. Well, let me heat her up before I go. Thanks, Julie. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute, Jimmy. Look, what do you mean Carol isn't any good? You knew her the whole time I went around with her. You know her mother and Mr. Fields. They're swell people. But Carol was a swell girl until Manny got his hands on her. You mean until she wanted Manny's hands on her? Listen, Fred. I got to get her away from him. I got to go in there and talk to her. With him listening? Dirtying everything you say? Ah, uh, look, Jimmy, there's a phone booth. Call her up. Well, she's right inside. Well, ask her to come out. Talk to her, not to Manny Cole. Ah, uh, come on. Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah, yeah, she's here, all right. Hold on. Dear, 
You're wanted on the telephone. Who is it? Well, I'm sure I don't know who all your boyfriends are. Hello? Jimmy, I told you not to call me anymore. No, Jimmy, I will not. Because I just won't, that's why. You're my girl, baby. That's what I was telling him, Manny. Honest, Manny, that's every word I said to him. Put the other one in my car. Oh, 15 cents, is that all? Hey, you're getting company. He's got a bodyguard this time. <laughs> a football player bodyguard. Let me talk to him. I'll tell him again that I'm your girl. He'll listen to me, man. He'll listen to me, baby. I'm taking Carol home. You want her wrapped up, or will you take her as she is? <laughs> Tell the punk, baby. I'm Manny's girl. Carol, you're a kid, 16. Carol, you don't know this guy. He'll get you into all... You got trouble? Take it outside. I want no trouble in my place. Relax, Pete. Everything's under control. Go on back to counting your profits. Profit ends when trouble starts. Take it outside. You understand? Sure. Sure, Pete, I understand. All right, punk, we'll settle it man to man. Like before, Superman, two or three goons hold me while you do the punching. Are you looking for action, or do you want to stand there flapping your yap all night? Or are you scared? Manny, I... Relax, baby, you're in the clear. I don't blame you. Just watch out for that nosy cop out front. Count me in. Well, sure, why not? Now bring your football along if you like. Reports of 502 out on Pico. How's everything where you are? No trouble, not a sign. Gravy train, huh? Believe me, I'd rather pound the beat. Well, I'll check in with you at 12. 104. Don't look so good. Well, I'm too tired to look for another place. I'll meet you inside. I'm warning you, stay away. Don't make me. Don't be a fool, kid. You think Al would carry a real gun? You had to go inside. All right, kid, drop it. I don't want to have to shoot you, kid.
my wife's in there. My baby's in there. Well, he don't need a dead father. Now, get back, mister. Lieutenant, your men closed up my place on Gambelli. Yeah, I know. What about the two other boys? Well, the ambulance just left. Doc says they're still alive. Oh. Who's he? Oh, the woman's husband. Poor devil, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes for the world. Doc, what about the two boys in the ambulance? Well, they could be up and raising Cain in a couple of weeks, or they could be in the morgue. Gunshot in the intestines and interesting wounds. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. You're, uh... Fred Davis. Oh. Brass knuckles, huh? You stick around, Fred. I want to talk to you later. Yes, sir. Reed, I want you to hold everybody that's had anything to do with this. I'll talk to them as soon as I finish with Gannon. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, how are the ones he shot? Interesting, the doc says. They've got a fighting chance. Any action there? Can't get a peep out of them. I don't know about the others. Anyway, he hasn't shot them. Well, let's see what I can do. Oh, what's his name? Jimmy Wallace. Jimmy! Jimmy Wallace! Do you hear me? The place is surrounded. Throw your gun out and come out with your hands over your head. Keep talking to him, Gannon. Jimmy. I'm from the press news. Get back where you belong. Listen to me, son. You aren't doing yourself any good. Sooner or later, you gotta come out of this. You know that as well as I do. The sooner you come out, the better it'll be for you. The man's right, boy. You in bad enough trouble as it is. There's no sense making more for yourself. Well, if you've got to stay, why don't you let the lady and the baby go? You're in good shape, Jimmy, if nothing else happens. They just took off Manny and Al, alive, kicking and cussing. Officer, I told, I told you, you to get, get back to your Look, I've got a good line to make. Please. Please do. Please do. Let me go with my baby. Officer, I told you to get back Please. to your blood. Shut up. I'm trying to hear what that guy's saying out there. Look, just one question. Why don't you throw a couple of tear gas bombs in there? He's got a baby in there. The stuff would kill the kid before he even noticed it. Thanks. I meant what I said, Jimmy. It's all right for you to come out. He's lying. He's just saying that so I'll give up. Boy, that little baby ain't done you no harm. Shut up! Nobody's talking me out of here! Shut up and sit back where you belong, both of you! Maxim, don't worry, we'll get your wife and baby out. Alive or dead? Where's the Fields girl? Carol Fields. She ran out. Anderson, send a call out on the Fields girl. She's probably gone home. Who's next? Anyone in particular? No. All right, you kid. Come on, snap it up. Reed, you better send Davis the next. He's got a bad head. I want to get him out of here. Move back there. Let that truck through. What was that? I don't know. I'll find out. She ran out. <laughs> You'd have stuck by him, wouldn't you? Manny. You better believe I would have. <laughs> Patsies. The world's full of them. I'll put full of them. Some of you don't even know your Patsies. Like a manny. <laughs> He's the biggest patsy of them all. Stop. 
stupid, Charlie. <laughs> You're horrible. Set number one up on top of the truck and put number two down here. Number one will cover the crowd reaction. That way, when things start popping, we'll get full coverage. And look, Joe, give me plenty of freedom on the mic cable, huh? Don't worry. Just what you needed the most, huh? Yeah, all well, the public's got to be served, I guess. Look, you better keep low when the trouble starts. So I can make a mighty mess of those cameras of yours. You think he might try and shoot his way out? I don't know. You're going to have to ask him about that. Lieutenant Porter thinks he will. And he hasn't cracked one since he holed up in there. Must be hard as nails. What about the woman and the baby? Yeah, he's still got them and the kitchen man. Rick, sounds OK. Oh, thanks, Joe. Hey, you want to say something to the audience? No, but Lieutenant Porter will in a minute. He's questioning him now and trying to find out how this trouble started. started over girls. <laughs> and boys? Yes, sir. I guess so. Well, let's leave the theory for the time being and, and just tell me what happened. Well, I think I already have. I picked him up there in the alley and got him cleaned up. He wanted to get Carol away from Manny. Which you were sure he couldn't do. <laughs> yes, sir. When a girl goes bad. I don't know, Fred. Maybe you're right. Well, I guess I told you all I know, sir. Well, Pretty bad knock you got there. You better get it home. Well, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to stay around. You see, Jimmy's a good friend of mine. Freddy, there isn't a thing you can do to help. You'd better go. Yes, sir. There's the Patsy's Patsy. <laughs> Honest, the way he walked into it out there, just asking to be slugged. Hey, footballer. Were you uh, reverent, loyal, courteous, and obedient? Oh, why don't you Stay shut up, you little... All right, you're next. Come on. You can send the rest of them home, Anderson. What's your name? The Joey Clayman. Mm -hmm. Sit down. No, not over there. Right down here, right across from me. Here, sir? All right, how'd this thing start? Well, I don't have the slightest idea, sir. I, I just happened to be here. I'd have been home in my bed a long time ago if you policemen hadn't made me stay. <laughs> it's way past my bedtime. When? The seventh of last month. You know you could go to the penitentiary, the gas chamber? Gas chamber? It was your gun that shot those boys. No. All right. Let's just say that you were toting it. Doesn't make any difference. Doesn't cut any ice at all because it was in your possession. It was not. I'd never seen the gun before. Well, I... <laughs> I seen it, but... I never had it in my hand. Al was toting it for Manny. When they went outside to fight, Jimmy grabbed it and started blazing away. I didn't have nothing to do with it. All right. Now, let's start right from the beginning. Jimmy had been going around with this girl, Carol. She fell for Manny, and <laughs> that made Jimmy sore. What about the alley? Alley? Well, they, they beat him up. They? I didn't lay a hand on him. <laughs> oh, I can prove it. You're going to ask Jimmy. All right, so you didn't lay a hand on him. You just stood back and watched and egged him on. Boy, that I believe. Now, go ahead. Carol's folks are out of town for overnight, so 
Manny was getting her oiled up. Doing what? Spiking her coke. Where was this? Right out there. Gambelli charges extra when it's a setup, but what's worth it to a guy? Anyhow, he sent me out for a couple of pints, and I... Hold it. J just a minute. Gambelli. Yes? Come here. What do you want? In here. Hey, what is this anyway? Gambelli, what do you charge the kids for a setup? Setup? A setup to minors. I didn't say nothing, Gambelli. Anderson, take him away. So you could put words in my mouth behind my back? Gambelli, you know these dirty, low-down, lying cops. Anderson, send him downtown, book him on a concealed weapons charge. Yes, sir. Gambelli, so what am I supposed to do? Search every kid that comes in here? Don't ask me. Ask the licensing board. They're going to close up this stink old tight on a drum. On your say so? When you've been smeared by every paper in this town? Oh, no. People don't like police brutality. And when I tell them how you beat up that poor kid. Oh, you can do better than that, Gambelli. One more word out of you, and if you're still able to talk, you can tell them how I beat you to a pulp on the inside. Without leaving a mark on the outside for evidence. I want to talk to my lawyer. You know, it's your phone. You pay for it. I'll make it on the outside. What did you do to Gambelli? He climbed to the phone booth like his coattails were on fire. <laughs> He's calling his lawyer. Didn't want me to listen in. Oh, Reed, did you find out what's going on outside? Yeah, a mobile TV unit. Rick Connor's covering our affair. Oh. Any break from the kid yet? No, no, not a crack. Could they get out there and see what's going on? Gentlemen, what you're witnessing now is stark to all tragedy. In that small building, four lives hang in the back. Who ordered the tear gas gun? Chief sent it, in case that crowd gets out of hand. I know you've got your orders from the chief, but I want you to be careful and think before you use this thing. It's been almost two hours now since the boy with the gun closed that door on the world and on humanity. Since then, not a word. No one knows what has happened to him or to his hostages. This is Carl Maxton. It is his wife and his baby behind that door, held captive by the boy with the gun. Teenagers. Never had them when I was a kid. Hey, Jim! Over here. Now, Lieutenant Porter. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the city's really distinguished police officers in charge of this operation, Lieutenant Porter. Would you like to say something to our audience, Lieutenant? Rick, there isn't much I can say at this time. Except, as you can see, there's a very bad situation here, which we're trying to get under control as quickly as possible. That's all, Reed. Oh, thank you, Lieutenant Porter. Reed? Uh, Lieutenant Porter. Must be the fields girl. Something's happening. An official car is pushing its way through the crowd. just learned that it's Jimmy Wallace's father and mother. See if you can pick him up, Joe. Bring him in a little closer. Just a minute. My name is Maxton. Maxton? Oh, Mr. Maxton, our baby's out there, too. Baby? You always think of them like that. Then why don't you keep your eye on him? They grow up. They grow up and... They fall in love, or think they do. How many times I've wanted to say to him, Jimmy, stay away from her. She's selfish, vulgar, cruel. No, it isn't true. 
She's rotten. Helen, please. A minute ago, I, I wanted to kill you. I held you to blame. We're in this together. We, you, all these people we've never even seen. Even her. Sit down in this booth and wait. Would you come with me, please? Just long enough for you to get rested a little, man. I don't know what to do. What's going on out there? What's happening? We're switching back to the studio until something further happens here. Forty-five seconds. Glenn? Oh, you're an angel, Julie. Selfish angel. I got lonely. It can happen to the best of us. It did. His family's here. So's the girl. She... I keep thinking about my own kids, Glenn. I never knew you were married. My husband was killed in a car accident. I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. A lot of time's gone by since then. I never had a family. a shot you just heard. We don't know yet who fired it. Trying to take the law into his own hands. He shot my boy, my poor little Al. He shot Al. I had to do something for my Al. Al, when is old man? Well, you're a little late. Let's send him downtown. Jim, over to the storeroom. Somebody over there, find out what's happening. Who is that? The winner boy's father. Nothing happened. Officer Gannon disarmed him. Thank you. Well, he probably heard the shot. The condition he's already in. There's only one way to find out. You still feel up to Mrs. Wallace? Anything, Lieutenant. Anything that gives him a chance. Yes, I feel up to it. Gannon, you still got that bullhorn here? Yes, sir. It's in my car. We are making every effort, but we are still without word as to what has happened. However... We still have no word. 
Just a moment, it's being transmitted now. The shot you just heard was fired by the father of Al Werner, father of one of the boys who was wounded earlier this evening by the boy with the gun. Just a moment, some more is coming through. He was, he was under great strain at the time. Ladies and gentlemen, station KQQQ will remain on the air to bring you the further news developments of this tragedy. We wish to thank the sponsors of the program usually seen at this time, Tracton's Restaurant, the finest of its kind anywhere, for relinquishing their time in order that we may bring you this public service feature. What happened out there? Oh, Julie, they're going to put me in jail, aren't they? Well, why shouldn't they? Julie, what would my father say? Don't you know what you've done? Don't you know what's going on out there? Well, that boy might be killed any minute. Maybe some other people, too. How do you think his father feels? I know, Julie. I really do. I've been working in this dump for six months, and I've seen a lot like you. You think because you're 16, the world owes you something. Well, it doesn't. You get what you work for. And you work to get Manny Cole. You wind up in the gutter before you're old enough to vote. You're wrong. I won't wind up like that. I won't. You're right, miss. No. No, I'm not right. Putting the whole thing on her neck, as if she'd invented it. Uh, Gambelli owns this dump. And I've been working in this dump for six months. You're here to bring the fire department down. Why? Don't you ever go to the movies, lady? See the newsreels all the time over in Europe. Crowd gets out of hand, they put them down with the hoses. They wouldn't dare. Something is about to happen here, ladies and gentlemen. The, the boy's mother is over now at the storeroom trying to talk her son out. That's her you see on your television screen at this moment. Here you are, Mrs. Wallace. Just, just press the button. We'll try and pick up every word she says. Perhaps she'll be able to talk him out of the storeroom. Jimmy! Listen to me, Jimmy. We love you. You're our flesh and blood. We'll stand by you no matter what happens. Please, come out. That's your own mother, son. Mrs. Wallace, please let me talk to him. Please let me. Why won't you let me talk you to him? You have talked to him. That's what got him here. Please, Now get please inside and me. stay inside. Now, Jimmy. Listen to me. This is Lieutenant Porter. You should see what you're doing to your parents. Now, I want you to come out. Nobody will hurt you. Jimmy, dear, just come to the window. Let's talk to each other. All right, Mom. Joe, got it, Rick. There he is, folks. The boy with the gun. The crowd is going crazy. The police can't hold them back. Sure rough on him. Never the rest of us. But it might have worked. I'm sorry. <laughs> Poor little kid. I hope they kill you. You're worse than an animal. Boy, <laughs> why don't you let her and the baby out? I can't. I just can't, not yet. Why? We can't help you by being here. I beg you, why can't you let us out? Because.
because when that door opens, I'm going to die. And I'm not ready yet. I've got things to think out. Thank you very much for your opinion, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been almost three hours now since high school student Jimmy Wallace became the boy with the gun. Three hours of waiting, three hours of terror. Uh, may I have your name, please? Am I really on TV? Uh, yes, ma'am, you are. Oh, the crazy kid. I'll tell you what I think, mister. Better take these punk kids, throw them in jail and toss the key away. That's what I think. My old man, if I did something wrong, he'd really straighten out. Yeah, well, That's thank you think. very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, may I have your name, please? Lieutenant Porter, what's happening? Well, how long are you going to wait? I don't know, Rick. You think he still might come out on his own? I don't know that either. But I do know once we start to pull him out. Well, it's not easy to give the word that might lead to, well, to a lot of people dying. Right now, it all depends on him. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't think about his being hungry. You can't let him get hungry at a time like this, can you? <laughs> Go to the window, please. The window! Can't you understand plain English? Tell him to get a bottle of milk for the baby! That's right, isn't it, Milk? Tell him to get a bottle of milk. And no tricks, you understand? What could I do, boy? Go ahead, call him. Do you mind if I wave a handkerchief? I don't want to get shot by mistake. Go ahead. as if the boy is coming out. Reed, get these people out of here. Come on, come on, come on. Right, come on. Come on. Come on. It's my family in there. Don't you. It's me, Sam. Sam, everyone all right in there? Ain't nobody hurt, if that's what you mean. Don't come any closer. What's the matter, Jimmy? You tired of being in there? Is he coming out, Sam? No, sir. We want some milk for the baby. He's hungry, Lieutenant. How can we get anything to you if you won't let us get any closer than this? Tell him to get a long pole or a stick and tie the bottle on the end of it. All right, Jimmy, we'll see what we can do. Watch yourself, Gannon. Reed. It's coming. Can't you get him to be quiet until it comes? Come on, inside, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like they're bringing food to the baby. 
Yes, the police have a basket containing the bottle of milk. Yeah, hold this, Reed. That ought to be enough to put him to sleep just smelling the cork. I hope he drinks it. I don't see how I can resist it. It's been in there a long time. Sam, we've got the milk and some hot coffee. Go ahead, get it. He's exhausted. Well, it's about time. Sure, I know what time it is. I've been trying to get you for three hours. Look, I got troubles here, and you're my lawyer. Come in, come in. No, not you, somebody else. Now, listen now. Yeah, while well, you were out enjoying yourself. Now get over here as fast as you can. Lawyers, kids, policemen, policemen threatening me. Can't get one punk kid out of my building. On top of everything else, he threatens me. Well, what would you do? First thing, I make the kids' parents pay for what it's costing the city. And every cent I'm out. On $78 a week take-home pay? I'd stop juvenile delinquency. You'd be out of business then. Am I supposed to watch their kids for them? Is it up to me to know what they're up to? Well, now listen, Gambelli. I've got kids of my own. Well, that's not my fault. I gotta see what they're up to. Reed, take care of him. Oh, Rick. You're gonna have to move back out of the way. Well, that's not gonna help us cover this thing. I'm not so sure you're not violating the rights of freedom of the press. Well, if the press wants to take a chance on having one of its high-priced talents flown to Kingdom Come... You mean something's gonna break? Yeah, we're gonna blast him out. Oh. Well, nobody likes it. Sergeant, what about my place? Your place? When all this blasting starts, what about the damage to my place? Look, Gambelli, I don't think you've got a thing to worry about. Because if we have anything to say about it, you're gonna be closed down so tight it won't make any difference. Where is that Lawson? Get oh, your mile off the dogs. Two bits, a quarter. Come and get him. That'll be great for his blood pressure. Yeah, well, for the sake of your blood pressure, you better start moving. Two bits, a quarter. You're trespassing. Oh, have one on a house, Mr. Good for Man and Beast. <laughs> Come and get it. Ah, leave him through. That's my lawyer. Get back. Come on, folks. Get your flank put in there. Lieutenant Porter? That's right. I'm John Lawson, an attorney. I represent Mr. Gambelli. Oh, sure, I know you. You've been a cop as long as I have. You get to know all the lawyers, good and bad. Good, then we can get right down to business. My client is very much upset. He feels that he has a claim against the city and you personally. Huh? He feels that reasonable care has not been observed in the protection of his interests. Is that so? Yes. 
Now, Lieutenant, you and I know that at a time like this, a man is apt to get upset, Mr. Gambelli, as well as you. But you and I also know that a cop who hits a kid in the presence of a witness is asking for trouble. When on top of that, he threatens the witness. Well, Mr. Gambelli is not a man to hold grudges. All that he asks of you is reasonable protection of his interests. Yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. You mean like that fellow over there that's making money out of Mr. Gambelli's own personal violence and law-breaking, huh? Well, Counselor will see you in court, and if I'm real lucky, I'll see both you and your client in jail. Uh, trouble? No, but there will be for Gambelli. I see you moved, Rick. Yes, sir. Oh, Gannon. I want you to take Mr. Max and the Wallaces inside, and I want them to stay there. I want you to handle it because you're the understanding family type of a cop. Yeah. Oh, and Gannon, get back as quick as you can. All right, folks. Inside. Gannon's in love, probably for the first time in his life, and he's got to pick a time like this. Jimmy! Jimmy, you better start listening. I want you to come out, Jimmy. Don't make us come in after you. Enough people have been hurt already. Jimmy! Nobody wants to harm you. But you can't hold those people any longer. You're doing a terrible thing. And so far, it can be understood. A baby. A child can live or die because of what you're doing. Jimmy, even if you don't care about yourself or your parents, let those people come out safely. Free those people and come out. I'm giving you 10 minutes, son. Then we're coming in. Think. Think hard. 600 seconds to live. Think about it, son. I'm afraid we're going to have to use gas. Have the respirator standing by. Gas with a baby in there? We're going to have to take that chance. We'll get the respirator on the baby as quickly as possible before it does too much damage. Yes, sir. Look at the no shooting. Only as a last resort. Scan it over there. Seven minutes left, Jimmy. Nobody can say what's going to happen now. Six minutes left. Respirator standing by. Less than three minutes. You last die, or you kill her. Don't shoot, boy. 
please don't shoot. Please don't shoot. She won't do it again. I won't let her. I promise. Please, boy. Two minutes, Jimmy. <laughs> You think you'll come out? After us waiting all this time? What kind of a man are you? Nobody's making you stay here. Women. Jimmy, there's one minute left. Nothing to lose. All right, go ahead, Carol. Jimmy. Jimmy, it's me, Carol. Maybe this is all my fault, Jimmy. Maybe it's everybody's fault. I don't know. I'm sorry, Jimmy. Sorrier than you'll ever know. For you and me and everyone. Don't make it any worse. Please don't. Come on, Jimmy, please. Carol? I want to, Carol. That's what I want to do. Thank heaven. He's coming out. Carol? He's going to shoot! Thank you. 